Hey guys, so this is my last video for my Calculus and Vectors video series. Um, We're going to be finishing off 9.4, which is on optimizing business. So we got two examples. Let's get straight into it. Example number 10. A commuter train carries 2,000 passengers daily from a suburb into a large city. The cost to ride the train is $7 per person. Market research shows that 40 fewer people would ride the train for each dime increase to the fare. Okay, so obviously that makes sense. If you're going to jack up the price, a dime each is going to result in 40 fewer people riding. And so the next sentence actually says pretty much the same thing, but in an opposite way. Um, if you say decrease the price, every dime is going to result in 40 more people riding. Okay, so pretty much the same thing. And that's why I'm not really going to underline anything. Now, the next sentence actually sets this question apart from the other two examples we did in the last video. If the capacity of the train is 2,600 passengers, so that is the maximum number of people who can ride the train safely, carrying fewer than 1,600 passengers means that costs exceed the revenue, so that means you can't have less than 1,600 passengers because you're going to make like negative revenue. You're going to lose money. What fare should the railway charge to earn the largest possible revenue? Okay, so how much should you actually charge them? What price? And that should result to the largest possible revenue. So my advice, if you're actually doing your exam in like a week, like my kids are, if you have um, your longer questions, your full answer questions, take a look and see if there is a word problem that has some sort of word that like means either minimal or maximum something. Okay, because that is an optimization question right there. And in this question, I'm maximizing the revenue. You guys already know how to maximize stuff. You take the derivative of your equation. So I have to find the revenue equation, take the derivative, set it equal to zero and solve. Okay, that's my solution. So let's just talk about the setup. Setup, you're going to have three things. Let statement, your equation that you're going to maximize or minimize, and then your constraints. So in this example, and we've already went over like how to create a revenue equation, um, what I would normally do is just leave a little bit of space at the top for my let statement. But I'm very familiar, like I've done this many times. And so making like a revenue equation, I usually do that first and then I start defining what X is, but that's just what I do. Okay, so your revenue is the number of passengers multiplied by the fare. So the fare is the easiest one that I find um, I can make. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is go into the question and look for anything that has a dollar sign. So these two numbers have dollar signs beside them. So they probably mean the price. $7 per person, but we're going to increase it by a dime. In fact, X is going to represent how many dimes I'm going to increase the $7 by. So if X is like 8, that's 8 dimes. So 80 cents plus the $7. That means a fare of $7.80. Okay? All right, so the number of passengers is usually I find the other two numbers that um, are in the question, but they don't have dollar signs beside them. Okay, so you got 2,000 passengers normally, but 40 fewer people would ride. So 2,000 minus 40, but it's 40 less per dime. So your X is going to represent the number of dimes. That's what I have in my let statement, and that's what I would probably write down. Only because when I do these revenue questions, it always mixes me up what the X actually means. And so I find it easier, just personally, find it easier to make the revenue equation first and then really think through what X actually means. So X is going to be how many dimes you're going to tack on or take off of the $7 price. Okay, so now that we have our let statement, we have our maximize um, equation. We're going to talk about the constraints a little bit. So they had told us some constraints on uh, the number of passengers. All right, now let me just scroll down because those constraints are going to help me figure out some restrictions on my x value. The number of passengers can't be um, less than 1,600. So that means it can be equal to 
or greater than 1600. So this guy right here is those passengers. Okay, so the number of passengers um, expression that we had above. Solving this for x, I get something like this. Okay, so x has to be less than or greater than 10. Now, you also can't have more than 2,600 passengers. Okay, so it has to be less than, it can be equal to, but it just can't exceed 2,600 people. So here is the expression for the number of people. And we're just going to solve for x again, and we get something like this. So x has to be bigger than or equal to negative 15. I've decided to write it in this form, but you guys can always write it as negative 15 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 10. Okay, so this is my restrictions on my x value. And let's just recall what x actually means. So this guy is the number of dimes that you're either going to put on or take off of the $7. Because it is the number of dimes, x has to be an integer. It's not able to be a decimal, because how can you have a decimal number of dimes? Now you can have negative dimes, which means that like you're going to take away dimes from the $7. If you have a positive number of dimes, you can add dimes to the $7. Okay, so you can have negatives or positive numbers for your x. All right, so those three things, your let statement, your equation, and your constraints, are the setup to your solution. So now you're going to actually solve this. Okay, so there's your solution. First, you're going to take your revenue equation. Um, up to you. If you want to keep it like this and take the derivative with the product rule, or you want to expand first, I'm a little bit of a fan of expanding first and simplifying just because you have that nice long polynomial. You can then take the derivative, which is right here, set it equal to 0, and then solve for your x. So the best value for x to maximize your revenue is going to be negative 10. But we just want to make sure you actually get a maximum. So you do a second derivatives test. Okay, second derivatives test. Take the second derivative um, and see what it equals to. If you have an x value, you're going to sub in the negative 10, but I didn't have an x value. So negative 8 is less than 0, which gives you a concave down, which looks like this. That means that at x equals to negative 10, I get a maximum. That matches my question, having a maximum revenue. So check mark, check mark. I'm good. And the very last part is answering the question. OK, so checking the restraints, not restraint, re restrictions, restrictions slash constraints. This is the answer that we got. So an x value of negative 10, and that gave me a revenue of $14,400. But I do want to check, remember how we had the restrictions on our x value, those endpoints of the domain. Okay, so the negative 15 and the 10, I also want to check those numbers because the textbook sometimes has these questions where um, we do have the domain ends being the one that actually is the maximum revenue. So we always want to do that check. But it looks like these guys aren't actually bigger than the one in the middle. OK, so negative 10 is the x value that would give the greatest revenue. But how do you write that as a sentence? So maximum revenue occurs when there is a negative 10 fair increase of 10 cents each. So that right there is a weird sentence negative 10 increases or else like why would you say negative 10 increases when it's actually better just to say how about positive 10 decreases so 10 decreases of 10 cents now what does that actually mean so you have 10 cents and you're going to multiply 10 of those but negative 10 so you're going to get a negative dollar right so if you have a $7 normal price, but you're going to subtract the $1, you're going to get the best price of $6 for your fare that will maximize the revenue at $14,400.
Okay, now it does say the total of 2,400 passengers, I believe because if you take negative 10 and you put it back into the passengers um, equation, so the number of passengers equation, you'll get about 2,400 passengers. All right, so here is the last question. Example number 11, a cylindrical chemical storage tank with a capacity of 1,000, excuse me, 1,000 meters cubed is going to be constructed in a warehouse that is 12 meters by 15 meters with a height of 11. Okay, so let's just write that down first. I have um, height of 11. Okay, and I got 12 meters. And this one's going to be, was it 5 or 15? 15 meters. Okay, so there's my warehouse. The specifications call for a base to be made of a sheet steel that cost $100 per meter squared. So the bottom of that box, um, or rather the bottom of a cylindrical tank. So I'm going to just draw, I don't know if I'm going to do this very well. Uh, something like this. Is that a cylinder? Sort of. Do you guys see that? Okay, so there's my cylinder. Maybe I'll even put in like, this is my radius, right? And then you got your height. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so the bottom of, not the warehouse, sorry, the bottom of the cylinder is made up of a sheet steel that costs $100 per meter squared. The top of that cylinder has to be made of steel that costs this much. Okay, so let me just, that's going to be the top. And this is for the base. And the wall, so the um, surrounding rectangle that's around the cylinder, uh, so the wall is going to be $80 per meter squared. So first of all, A, determine whether it is possible for a tank um, of this capacity to fit in the warehouse. If it is possible, state the restrictions on the radius. Okay, let's think about this logically. They're asking you, will this cylinder um, actually fit inside that warehouse. Okay, so the radius itself, if you have that being 12, then that means the radius, the biggest that the radius could possibly be is 6, right? So this is from the 12 divided by 2. <clears throat> the height can't exceed 11. Okay, because they said that, well, your warehouse itself is 11. That means that your cylinder can't be bigger than 11, okay, because that is the height of the warehouse. So this is height of warehouse. Okay, let's take those two numbers because those are like the very biggest radius, the very biggest um, height. If you have those two numbers, you can calculate the volume of the cylinder and see if you can even fit like a thousand meters cubed um, storage tank in this warehouse. Okay, so I put in the six and I put in the 11 into a cylinder volume equation and I get 1,244. Because this number is actually bigger than what I really need, all I need is 1,000. I don't need 1,244 meters cubed. So that means it is possible. Yeah, because the biggest that you can make is 1,200 meters cubed, but you only need 1,000 meter cubed. So let's take a look at the next part. If fitting, if fitting the tank in the warehouse is possible, determine the proportions. So give me the radius and the height that meet the conditions and oh, 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 minimizes, right, right? Okay, so that's an optimization question. You wanna minimize the cost of the steel. All right, so that's where all of these guys come in. So here's my base, my top, and my wall. All these guys were just gonna, I don't know, purple, sure, because I feel like drawing with purple today. All of these guys are going to create my cost. So let's take a look at what that will look like. Oh, we forgot to do that. Yeah, maybe we should talk about the constraints. Okay. <laughs> Scroll back up for a second. Not too fast. A actually did ask us for the constraints on um, your radius. 
And so we had said that radius can only be from 0 to 6. It can equal 6, but it can't equal 0 because obviously if it equals to 0, you don't really have a cylinder. Okay. The other part of it is, now that is one part of the constraint, but what if your height is actually at its maximum? Does that actually do anything to your radius? So if your height is at a maximum of 11, like that is the very highest your cylinder could actually be, let's actually calculate what the radius is because we know the maximum or the volume that I need is only 1,000. So I'm going to solve for r and I actually get r is greater than or equal to 5.89. So instead of having a constraint of 0 to 6, we've now narrowed it down a little bit with our extra piece of information that really the constraints for your radius is anywhere between 5.4 to 6. So it's a very small gap that we actually have a radius that can be. Okay, so going into the cost now. So let's see if we understand this. We had said that the cost for the bottom is going to be 100 bucks per meter squared. Okay, and the bottom is obviously a circle for um, your cylinder. They also said that the top is going to be $50 per meter squared, and the top is also a circle, so you're going to multiply those guys together. Now the wall, the wall has its own uh, formula, which is 2 pi r h. This is, a, I mean, like, let's go over this. The 2 pi r is the circumference of a circle, which if you kind of unwind, is actually going to be just a straight line. And then the height right here is the height of the cylinder itself. And so if you take this rectangle and you decide to, like, circle or kind of fold it, it becomes that side of the cylinder portion. So that guy is this side. Okay, so all of this part. And you're going to multiply that by the price, which is $80. So adding all of those things together, so this added to this gives you a total cost, and that's what you want to minimize. So that gives rise to this guy right here. We're going to minimize 150 pi r squared, that's the first two added together, plus the 82 pi r h. Okay, so here's the problem. Too many variables, right? So you need to make sure that you only have one variable, and we can actually use one of the constraints. So I'll just scroll down a little bit. One of the constraints, which was you said that your volume was 1,000, so if your um, volume is 1,000, you can solve by bringing all this to the other side, okay, getting it in the denominator, and now you have an equation for h. So knock out that h and put this guy instead. Now you have everything as r's, and you can take the derivative after you simplify it a little bit. Okay, so that is a setup. You had any let statements you needed to, but I don't think we needed any let statements. Okay, because obviously we know that r is radius and so on. We have our second portion, which is our minimization of the cost equation. And then we have um, our constraints, right? So we had already done our constraints. Okay, let's take a look at the solution. Same equation, or sorry, same example. All right, here's the solution. Here is the cost formula, all simplified. Take the derivative. Okay, so again, I'm trusting you guys to just pause and be able to do the derivative on your own. Set it equal to zero and then solve for your r. So the optimal radius is 5.54 and that is actually between, I believe we had a, like a restriction on our radius. It had to be less than six, but then also it had to be bigger than 5.38. Okay, so now that we have a radius, we just wanna make sure that that gives us a minimum cost so taking the second derivative, notice that you have an r. What you do is you sub in your r value that you just found, your critical value, and put it into here wherever you see an r and solve. So your answer is actually greater than zero, which is a concave up, and that gives you a minimum, okay, at this specific r value. So checking our constraints on our radius 
which was 5.38 and then also the 6. It does still look like, I mean, this guy is the smallest cost. These ones are bigger. So that means that the best radius is going to be 5.54 meters and the best height, well, we might have to take our 5.54, sub it back into our height equation and solve. So the best height looks like it's about 10.37 meters in order to minimize a cost at 43,344. Okay, so that is my entire project that I've actually waited several years in order to do. I just never had the means to do it. So I'm very grateful that I was able to complete this project. And I'm actually really, really grateful for you guys to follow me along this journey. My classes this year have been my first ones that have followed me almost every day watching these videos. And so I'm so proud of them and very proud of myself too. I know I don't mean to brag or anything like that, but super proud of uh, having some sort of idea, some sort of goal and accomplishing it. So I wish you guys all the best. Good luck on your exams. You guys are going to nail it.